So what happens if Guitar Center really does go out of business? Hey, in this video, I'd really love your comment on three things down below. I wanna know what you think about these three things. Who are the brands that are hurt the most if Guitar Center goes out of business? What happens to those brands? And what kind of opportunity does that give independent guitar stores? First off, let me say, I really want to hear what you have to say about this in the comments. I was thinking about this the other day, about what really happens if Guitar Center goes out of business. Now, it's been in the news that Guitar Center's claiming bankruptcy and they're going out of business. I mean, we've been seeing that since the 2000s, and I get it. I mean, I went into a Guitar Center probably six years ago and was going in for a high-end tailor, and the guy tried to sell me a $200 banjo. So, I mean, I know there's problems. It's not that there's, you know, that there's not problems, but I'm not talking about that. I'm really talking about what happens to all these brands, like everybody that is so, for lack of a better term, in bed with Guitar Center, what happens to those brands if Guitar Center goes out of business? I mean, I think about how many guitars of Epiphone, for example, the Guitar Center sells, or Schecter, or any of those other you know brands that I consider Guitar Center brands. I mean, these, companies have essentially, there are, there are huge numbers of guitars going into Guitar Center and often at the expense of valuable relationships with local dealers. I mean, if you think about Music Man, like how many guitars does Guitar Center sell for Music Man? When was the last time you went into a store and they just had a wall full of Music Man guitars? I mean, it's sad, I really like Music Man. I own three or four of them. I'm just saying, like, what happens to Music Man if they no longer have Guitar Center to sell all these guitars and they don't have this independent dealer network to sell those guitars? Like, does Music Man shrink? Do they capitulate? What about, you know, Schecter or some of these other brands, ESP? What happens when, you know, when you have, I mean, I get it. There's some independent dealers that do a lot of volume, but what's happened is so many of these brands have sold so much to Guitar Center that the mom and pop shop, you know, they're not carrying hundreds and, th and hundreds of any of those brands. I mean, maybe some shops are carrying hundreds, but you know, your, your average mom and pop shop has the brands they already sell, right? And they're trying to get brands that are giving them margin. And I consider a whole bunch of brands, guitar center brands, especially lower cost guitars. And what I mean by that, a lot of these guitars, you know, they, people go into Guitar Center, they decide they want to play guitar, they buy a guitar for a couple hundred bucks, and then they sell it on eBay or whatever to buy the next guitar. So then now the, the used market is flooded with those guitars too. I just, it's weird to think about that. Like I, I know we've talked about Guitar Center could potentially be going out, but the domino effect that that might have. And when I was a kid, I used to live in San Diego and there's a street down there, El Cajon Boulevard, and Guitar Center used to be there and there was a guitar center and there was all sorts of guitar shops around the guitar center. Freedom Guitar, Moe's Guitar, all sorts of sweet guitar shops. And it was interesting because when that guitar center moved from El Cajon Boulevard across town, most of those other little guitar shops ended up moving. I think only Freedom is even still on El Cajon Boulevard. And part of the allure was that guitar center was bringing people in and then people would come to Guitar Center, you know, Guitar Center was doing all the advertising, bringing everybody in, everybody would come there, park in their parking lot, and then walk around to all these other shops. So there is some value that Guitar Center brings as far as advertising and promoting guitar to the general population, and especially those that don't play guitar yet. Um, and so what does that do? I mean, does that same effect happen on a more global level, like as from Guitar Center leaving and everything else kind of disperses and spreads out, like what if one day Guitar Center said, hey, we're closing and all of these brands, so I'm on their website right here, and I just filtered, I went to Electric Guitars, filter by best selling, because you know they're selling thousands of these a day probably. Squire, I mean, what a great example, right? Squire is listed as their top selling a Squire Special Edition Bullet Strat, 129 bucks, right? Squire, Squire, Epiphone, so the top six are three Squires, uh, two Epiphones, and then another Squire, and then a Gibson Les Paul Special P90, ESP, you know, GNL Tribute. Um, I mean, what happens to ESP? What happens to ESP in America? I mean, they're overseas, 
you know, I'm, I'm just saying the American presence of these guitars, like what happens? I really want to know what you think. I'm, I, I'm really contemplating this because I, I think at some point with all the changes Guitar Center has been through, right? Being on the publicly traded on the stock market and then being brought out and, and now being privately held and the changes there. And it used to be the place really that you'd be able to get good deals and all that stuff happening. And I had a Guitar Center employee, employee tell me, yeah, we're pretty much just like Best Buy with guitars now. I mean, all that's very, very true. And, you know, more and more with the internet, just the stories you hear about Guitar Center employees and their you know, it's like very hit and miss whether or not you have somebody. I, I went in, I was on my way to um, an interview situation and I just happened to be uh, going uh, down the 101 freeway and there's a guitar center in Oxnard. There was no other guitar store around. And I went in to ask for a certain Zoom thing and there were two guys behind the, the, uh, behind the counter in the audio, like pro audio, neither of them had any idea what I was talking about. I actually get my phone out and like go on their website and be like, hey, can you look up, the, here's the SKU number, can you look this up? And this is like just a mainstream Zoom recorder. It wasn't like something crazy or off the, you know, off the beaten path. So, you know, yeah, there's internal issues. And, you know, for lack of not just rambling on here, tell me in the comments, what do you think? Who are the most, let's talk about, a couple things in the comments. Who are the brands that are hurt the most if Guitar Center goes out of business? What happens to those brands? And what kind of opportunity does that give independent guitar stores? Let me know in the comments below.